Hey there everybody, Decaf here from wiseflatheadquarters.com. Today I'm going to be opening up Blender to show you how to make transparent meshes. These can be used to create many different things from windows and cockpits to canopies uh, to even an afterburn on a fighter jet. There's a lot of different things you can do. There are a bunch of different variables that we need to consider when making transparent meshes. Uh, these will dictate how you go about making them, so it's important to understand them all. Uh, I like to begin with normals. Normals are very important to making transparencies because they distinguish which side of the mesh we can actually view it, it from. It's only visible in the textured view mode, so if you switched over into the solid view mode, you'd be able to see it from both sides. However, in the textured view mode, if we go into this mesh right here and flip the normals, we can no longer see it from this side. Instead, we have to look at it from the back side before we can see it. So getting the different meshes and normals all lined up is a very important step. Next we have the opacity and tint phase of our transparency. Here is where we want to go ahead and actually define how clear we want our mesh to be and what color we want our mesh to be. Opacity is really just a term that I use to describe how transparent it is. It, the scale goes from 0 to 255, just like the RGB scale. In this scale, I only go from 0 to 250 so that we can actually see the very, very clear mesh of the 250. Adding a tint to the R transparency gives us the ability to add in a color. Uh, you'll look at some F-22s out there, some F-16s, for example, they have tinted canopies. This is how you go ahead and replicate that in YS Flight. The last thing I'd like to talk about is lighting. Lighting goes and defines how you are going to be able to view this at night. Almost every single model, 99% of it is not viewable at night with any vibrance. Only navigation lights and things like that are visible. In this example, you can see the flashing lights going on and off, but the rest of the model is pretty blanked out except for some internal lighting that we can see through transparent windows. In this shot, we see the inside of a cockpit with lighted instrument panels. This is very, very interesting because it allows us to have a better feel of flying at night. Okay, so let's get into actually making something transparent. Right here, I have a quick little light beam that I've made. This can be attached to any kind of light source that you want to work with. So let's go and actually make this. We're going to start out with a cone, and we're going to make it subdivided. So we're going to go in and do a multi-cut, and we're going to say four. That should be good enough. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this vertice at the end and that gives us a starting point for our light and it also gives us an open end. That gives us the option to either number one have a separate piece be the actual light or have uh, this be closed off with a circle and the actual light source be a part of this light beam. Regardless we want to also open up this far end here so that we can actually see inside of our beam. Now, we're going to deal with the inside a little bit later. First, we're going to work on our color gradient. The first thing we want to do is tint this. So we're going to go into vertex paint mode, and we're going to select a yellow. I particularly like the default yellow here, right there. And so I'm going to set it, the entire thing to that color. You can also paint it again inside of the actual transparency menu. So to get there, we're going to go over here we're going to click on the script window rather than the button window and it's going to open up the last script that you had open. If you just open Blender this will be completely blank. To get to this script right here which is the transparency script you're going to go scripts mesh YS face mode and now right here we have the option to also select which color we want the faces to be. So depending on which way you want to work either one will do fine. Next we're going to go in and actually make our model transparent. So I'm going to go and select these guys here and I'm going to make these 180 for the transparency value which is ZA down here. Then I'm going to go ahead and make this guy 200 and we'll take a look. This is actually getting a little bit lighter faster than I'd like so we're going to go back and make this guy 160 
and make this guy 180. And then we'll continue on with our pattern. 200 and 220. Okay, now we have our gradient all established and we can fiddle around with this however we want. We can go ahead and change the tint and we can also go ahead and change uh, where these individual uh, divisions of a gradient are. The next thing that we want to do is establish the double-sidedness of our beam because we should be able to see this beam from both sides. It shouldn't just be this weird looking cone wrapping thing that we see right here. So there's two different ways to do it. It goes through either object mode or through edit mode. The edit mode option is this one right here. And I'll show you the object mode option. It's very, very simple. The only difference between the two is where we actually do the duplication. In the object mode option, we're going to go ahead and duplicate our object right here in object mode. In edit mode, we go into edit mode and then duplicate it. So we're going to go right now, we're going to go shift D to duplicate. And you can see that this can move around, so that's excellent. We'll hit escape to snap it right back to where it should be. We're going to go into edit mode, select everything, and flip the normals. This gives us, in my opinion, a better view of a light source coming out. It's viewable from both sides, and when you have overlapping colors and gradients, you can see them building up on each other. That's preferable for me. I don't know what you want to do, but that option is available to you. On the other hand, with this guy over here, instead of duplicating in object mode, I went into edit mode, and I duplicated it there. So let's go back and show the process right here. So right now we have our double cone there, That's our, there's our single cone. So we'll go into edit mode, select everything, duplicate, and flip the normals of the duplicated feature. The last part of making our transparent mesh is to determine if we want it to be bright. That is to say if it's going to be really visible at night like a landing light, navigational beacon, or an afterburner. In this case where we're working on a light beam that's going off into the darkness and fading away, we're definitely going to want to make it bright. So to do that we're going to go back into our scripts. We're going to go back to our mesh wise face mode script and we're going to click on the bright mode there. So we're going to select bright and what that does is it selects all the faces in here and says yes these are all going to be visible at night. So in the end it's going to look something similar to this where we have the light beam going way off into the night and slowly fading away. So now we know how to make transparent meshes. It'll take some practice to learn all the little nuances of transparencies, but if you have any questions or comments you'd like to talk about, go ahead and throw me a comment down below. Like always, I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible.